Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Amanda. I'm bringing you guys through a full day of eating today. Now today is actually a rest day, so I'm not going to the gym, but I specifically wanted to film this on a rest day to show you guys that I eat the same whether I'm in the gym training or taking a rest day. I am going to go on a walk later, hit my step goal, but I'm not actually training in the gym, but I'm still eating the same because I eat the same every single day, same amount, whether I'm in the gym or not in the gym. Aside from maybe Friday and Saturday night, you know, gotta go out to eat, order some takeout. You know how we roll around here, balance baby. But aside from that, I eat the same whether I'm in the gym or not in the gym. Now, if you are new here and you don't know, I intuitively eat. I use those two words very lightly because I think some people hear the term intuitive eating and they think, oh, I want ice cream, I eat ice cream, that's intuitive. That's not quite how it works. I still focus on healthy, whole, nutrient dense foods, foods that are high in protein, but I listen to my body in terms of hunger cues and not playing the numbers game. I don't track calories, I don't track macros. I did this at the beginning of my fitness journey. I think it can be such a useful and helpful tool for beginners to learn how to properly fuel their bodies, but it's not something that I think should be a goal for most people general lifestyle people, I should say, as a long-term goal. So we're gonna get right into it. It's about 8 a.m. right now. I woke up at 5.30, did some work. I had my coffee. I am trying to drink 20 ounces of water first thing in the morning before my coffee, and then I try to finish the rest of the 20 before I eat breakfast, which is around 7.30 to 8. I'm slacking a little, as you can tell, so I need to do some chugging, but I'm gonna make breakfast now. I'm making avocado toast and eggs. You guys are gonna be proud of me because I'm not making cream of rice for the first time ever on a YouTube video full day of eating. So we're gonna make that. I am going to start with two eggs here. I will sometimes add egg whites in depending on if I want more protein, but I think we're good just having eggs today. I'm really trying to prioritize where I'm getting my food from and just focusing on what's in my food. So I am going to go to the farm, a farm. I've gone to a few, but I wanna kind of test some different ones out. I'm going to go to one this weekend and get some farm eggs as opposed to getting them from the grocery store and shop local, you know, support the farmers. I almost always use sourdough bread. I picked this up from Whole Foods, a local Whole Foods that I have near me this past weekend. Pretty good, it's 120-ish calories for about two slices. The ingredients are really, really clean as well. Just wheat flour, water, sea salt, and sourdough culture with enzymes, which is really, really good as opposed to some brands. I do want to start making my own sourdough as well. If you guys have any tips for me, please let me know because I'm totally new to it, but I've seen so many people doing that recently on TikTok, so I really wanna start doing that. I saw this hack on TikTok, so I tried it out this week. I was mind blown. There are some remnants in here, but if you only ever use half an avocado, which is what I usually tend to do, I never eat one full avocado in one sitting because fun fact, I actually don't really like avocados that much. I just eat them because they're good for me. And if you do it the right way, they taste good. All of that aside, put it in cold water. It stays green, it doesn't get soggy, it keeps the same taste. It's amazing because I hate when my avocados get brown and gross. So best little hack ever. and get these eggs over here before they overcook. See, look how green that avocado is and it's been sitting in there for 24 hours. I think this is the key to the best avocado toast, everything but the bagel seasoning and then red pepper flakes. And then lastly, I'm going to add a little bit of honey. It sounds weird to put honey on your avocado toast until you start doing it. It just makes it 10 times better. I put honey on literally everything. And there we have it, a very healthy, balanced meal. We have a lot of healthy fats in here. We have some carbs and then some protein. I 
I just took about a four mile ish walk. It's about noon now, but I'm actually just gonna have a snack. I'm not starving, I don't know. My eggs and toast filled me up. So we're just gonna have a snack and then I'll do lunch in a little bit. I'm doing some plain Greek yogurt here. This is Chobani. When you're looking for your Greek yogurts, I always advise people get the plain or just vanilla flavored as opposed to the little packeted ones that are filled with sugar and flavored with all the crazy things. Sweeten it up yourself with fruit, honey, whatever toppings, chocolate chips, jazz it up, but this will be much better ingredient wise. Also, my snack every single day is either Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. It's the ultimate protein hack. Just going to top with some frozen raspberries. I've been very much into frozen fruit on my cottage cheese, on my yogurt, cream of rice, oatmeal, whatever I'm doing. It's just so much better because Fruit is not in season right now, and I got so sick of having to throw my fruit away. And something about the melted frozen fruit, or just letting it stay frozen, it just tastes so good. Then I'm doing about a tablespoon-ish of chia seeds and topping with some honey, because if you can't tell by now, I put honey on literally everything. And that's it. Simple, easy peasy, high in protein, nutritious. It's all you need for a snack. It's a little bit later than what I would like to be eating lunch at. Ideally, it's about 2.30 at this point. I do not know where this day has gone. I feel like I say this on every single YouTube video. I always end up eating lunch so late on days that I film YouTube videos. I don't know. I don't know, but I ingredient prepped some ingredients to throw together Mediterranean bowls, which is perfect because I'm already behind and I am starving. I need something quick, something easy. So I'll show you guys how I threw those together. Okay, so here is what we are working with. I have some lettuce as a base, then I have some chicken, which is really good. I just made it with garlic powder and paprika, but it turned out amazing for whatever reason, better than what it normally does. Then I have chickpeas and cucumbers in a little baggie because I ran out of Tupperware. I have some red onion, which I also was doubling up for taco bowls for dinners this week, feta cheese, and then I have tzatziki, which is the key if you were doing Mediterranean bowls. So we're gonna do a decent amount of lettuce as a base. I have about mm, this much chicken left, so I'm just gonna throw it all in because I'm hungry and it's late. Oh my God. And I'm just gonna pour in some chickpeas. I think I'm gonna have to scoop through to find the cucumbers down there, but we'll get them. Some red onion, a sprinkle of feta on top. We'll just polish her off here. And then tzatziki. If you can find this brand specifically, I think this is the best. I found this before at Costco and then Redner's. I swear it's the best tasting tzatziki. And a generous amount because it's so good. And you can mix it all up. This is going to be very difficult to eat because it's overflowing, but look at that. So many colors, so beautiful, so nutritious, high in protein, perfect because it's easy to throw together as well. All right, it's dinner, taco bowl time. If there is something you can always count on me for, it's making a taco bowl every single week for some sort of meal because it's just so freaking easy. So I ingredient prepped this as well. I have some ground beef. I'm on a red meat kick, I'll explain later. Ground beef, peppers, onions, rice, I forget what I did for toppings, but I'm just gonna throw it all together on a skillet, easy peasy. First up, bell peppers, and then I'm going to throw in the red onion that's left over from my Mediterranean bowls from lunch. And I'm gonna cook these for a decent amount of time. I like my peppers and onions seemingly burnt. So we're gonna wait and then we'll toss everything else in. I think I may have talked about this in my last video as well, but I know a lot of people always wonder how long ingredient prep or how long meal prep lasts people. Everyone is different. I usually prep for roughly four-ish days. I prep on a Sunday morning or afternoon. I usually eat something for dinner that Sunday night that I prepped and then it brings me through Thursday slash Friday morning. So I'm finishing off like all my prepped food today. 
All right, so while that is cooking up and doing its thing, I wanted to talk to you guys about the red meat. I do not know why I ever stopped implementing red meat into my diet regularly. I just always tended to kind of go for white meat, probably because it was a leaner source of meat as opposed to red meat. But since adding it back in, I truly feel so much better in so many ways. I feel like my hair, skin, nails, digestion, just overall body feels better. And there is some validity to that for sure. So I think a lot of people steer away from red meat because a lot of myths that they hear based on heart health, cancer, things like that, that all comes down to how the cattle cows are raised, number one. Number two, how the food is processed. Beef itself is not bad for you. It is filled with so many nutrients and especially for women to get in that extra source of iron is amazing. Plus collagen, zinc, there are so many benefits to it. So I really want to, like I said earlier, go to a farm for eggs, get some grass fed beef. So for now, I've just been getting my beef from the store, but I do wanna start getting that from a farm, but I do feel so much better since implementing it. So. Yeah, highly would recommend. You don't need to be scared of beef, okay? All right, onions are now cooked down a bit. Peppers are starting to get nice and crisp, how I like them. So now I'm going to add everything else in. I know not everyone has the luxury and the time to heat things up on a pan, but if you do, it really does taste so much better. First thing, corn and beans that I roasted. I'm just gonna polish it off. What the heck, why not? Corn and beans that I roasted at the beginning of the week. The remainder of my beef, this is 94 or 93, gotta get it all here, percent lean. And I seasoned with taco seasoning. I love taco seasoning. And you will see, guys, this is so much food, but it's so much volume. So much food does not have to equate to so many calories. I don't track, so I don't know how many calories are in this meal technically, but adding things like peppers, onions, it volumizes up your meal so much. My bowl is going to be so full. You will see, especially with the lettuce in there. So taco bowls are definitely a forever hack if you are in a calorie deficit, wanting to lose weight, anything like that. And rice, that's probably more than what I had the other days, but we don't want it to go to waste. Usually with my rice as well for taco bowls, I will mix it up with lime juice and then cilantro at the beginning of the week to make it fancy schmancy and just taste extra good. Now my remainder of lettuce. I'm just going to throw all of this over the lettuce. It's so much food, but like I said, so much volume. Topping, which I do for every single taco bowl, is plain Greek yogurt. It's a sour cream substitute. Don't knock it till you try it. I'll say it every single time because I put this stuff on literally every single thing. I will always say, if you put this next to sour cream and you took a spoonful of each, would it mimic it perfectly? Probably not, to be honest, but it's pretty darn close. And when you mix it all up, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Beautiful, never gets old. This is my favorite part of the day right now. Let me show you guys my little seltzer collection. At the beginning of the week, this little shelf right here stays stocked. I'm an Olipop girl. My sister, she likes the poppies. Yeah, these are the poppies. And I think she also drinks, what are these? Bubblies, I don't know. I think this is just like seltzer water, but I'm an Olipop girl, so we're going cola, my fave. Oh, that sound, I love it. I would seriously like to personally thank the inventor, the creator of the Olipop because they make my world a better place. Now, here's the thing, guys. I fully had every intention on making a Ninja Creamy tonight, but then I realized I don't have any made up. So, good job me on that one that I forgot to make one for tonight. So, that's gonna be it. That's sad, I don't have like any desserty type things in my fridge right now normally i'll do a creamy or a yeah so i got nothing absolutely nothing so olipop is going to be our cap for the day but thank you guys so much for watching as always thank you so much for being here i appreciate you all so so much and i will see you next time